You're listening to Illuminate, our hands at work Advent series on the Meanwhile in Africa podcast channel. How did we end up here? The rumble of the motto under the seat, it all feels like freedom in a strange kind of way as you hold tight to the driver. The payment for the driver today will feed his wife and his young baby. You're not the only one on the road as you roll through town. Every stand at the market seems to be selling the same vegetable as the last. The smell of frying fish is crossing the road while chickens scurry under the market tables looking for anything that may have fallen from the rough wood tables to the ground. As the paved road gives way to a dust road, you feel the motorbike speeding up the wind whipping your hair on your cheeks and making your eyes water uncontrollably. Slowing down and entering the community of Matinho A, the freedom felt in the motorbike's rumble is left behind. As you see more and more of the community, you get the sense that you've been let in on a secret or at least something very personal. The eyes of an onlooking child have a hold on you as she walks alone at the side of the road. The grandmother holding a garden hoe over her shoulders, the handle is thicker than her wrist. Pray for the rains, may there be enough rain, but not too much. You couldn't have imagined this community before today. But it has been here all along, and so has the care point that operates out of a local church. Life and joy are found here with the children, their caregivers and the local volunteer care workers. Kara said with the care workers and the grandmothers, the mothers and fathers, the aunties and uncles who are responsible for caring for the most vulnerable children. She is a volunteer from Australia who supports the local hands at work team in Chimoyo, Mozambique. The team looks after Matinho A and three other community-based organizations. Audrey coordinates this team. She is gentle and joyful. Yet, she knows the pain that exists in these communities because she has experienced challenges in her own life. After greeting one another, we walk with the care workers down to the dusty road to the home that we are visiting. As we walk, we are greeted by the people who we pass. Sometimes we stop and shake hands, but other times we say hello and keep going. As we approach the home, we see Rebecca, a grandmother, or Gogo, as they say here in Africa. She is sitting outside of her house on a grass mat. Audrey mentions that this house was built by hands at work. Gogo Rebecca knows pain and loss. She has lived through the heartbreak of eight miscarriages and her husband has since passed away. Her only child, a daughter, was born during the civil war in Mozambique. They were in constant fear of being attacked, specifically from the brutality of soldiers who attack women as if they never had mothers or sisters themselves. The lasting impact has been her daughter's emotional and mental trauma, leaving her with wounds too great for her to manage. Pain, sorrow. At the age of 16, Rebecca's daughter was taken advantage of and became pregnant. Esther was born later that year and Rebecca was now responsible for caring for a teenager and a newborn. Kara shares. When Gogo heard about her grandchildren having been born, she went to get them 
bring them back to her home because she knew that her daughter and son-in-law were unable to properly care for the children. By the time Rebecca's granddaughter Esther was 19, she had given birth to her first child, a son. They survived by Gogo doing some peace work. She works on other people's farms as a way to earn a little bit of money. Although Gogo Rebecca knows that her daughter was not able to care for her children, it has not been easy for Rebecca either. Without regular work, sometimes there is no food in the house. Nothing. But Rebecca knows the care workers in Martinio, and the care workers know her. They welcome the children to the care point, where they know that they will receive a hot, nutritious meal. The food that they receive at the care point reduces the burden that Rebecca carries in providing for her children. Her and her grandchildren are obviously among the most vulnerable people in Mazzinho. Like a few other vulnerable grandmothers, we provide a lunchbox for her each day. Each day, the children carry home a small lunch for their grandmother. It keeps her going, but regardless, her health is in decline. She requires an operation, but she is too fragile and undernourished to get the treatment. We are providing her with a food parcel for a few months. It means she can have some breakfast and some dinner as well. Our aim is to improve her nutrition in order to enable her to get this operation. As the care workers sit with Rebecca at her house on the grass mat, they talk and they laugh. Sometimes they cry. She has a strong relationship with the local care workers, particularly with Alzira. Alzira also helps clean up and takes care of some chores before she leaves. Rebecca waves with a frail arm and looks forward to seeing Alzira tomorrow. Alzira nods, knowing Rebecca is completely committed to the children that she has become the primary caregiver for. But a little help goes a long way. And when Gogo has the energy, it's lovely to have her come and light up the care point with a smile that shows all of her remaining teeth. We have days where we invite the primary caregivers of the children to come together where they can be encouraged and celebrated. Gogo will always be there. She loves being involved at the care point. So, there is freedom at the end of this dusty road. Freedom from a stark, lonely existence. She is loved. Hope has been restored. She has friends who, like Jesus, have come to her who see her pain and understand it. Because they were raised in the same place with similar conditions, but they found our Heavenly Father in a community that you couldn't have imagined before today. Please pray for Rebecca and many other caregivers like her across Africa. Pray that she will experience full healing and restoration. Thank you for listening to Rebecca's story. Her name and her children's name have been changed for privacy. You have been listening to Illuminate Podcast by Hands at Work in Africa. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, please find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts by searching Meanwhile in Africa. Learn how you can give the gift of hope. Visit www.handsatwork.org slash the gift of hope.